bring in Jim Tierney to talk more about this. Uh, he's the CIO of Concentrated U.S. Growth with Alliance Bernstein. Jim, you hear all this? What do you think about the market? I completely agree with some of the trends that we're seeing in terms of the consumer is weaker. When you go through second quarter earnings reports on the consumer side, yes, Walmart killed it, but Walmart was taking share of high-income consumers. I'm not sure that's a robust statement about what's going on. TJX, great numbers, uh, but again, consumers looking for value. You look at the negative side of reports, there were a whole bunch of them. Uh, my favorite is Lamb Weston sold fewer French fries. Hmm. People are boycotting French fries. They can't go out. McDonald's had negative comms. Ulta Beauty is seeing a lot of competition. All of it is painting a similar picture where the consumer is just holding on, not prospering here. Uh. So I, I think the slowdown is real. Jim, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quote my good friend and colleague Steve Leesman and say I've got to push back on that a little bit because for every retailer that is down, and your points are well noted, look, we got Dollar Tree, Dollar General, 75-cent tree today, right? Yeah. Same as the general. I can point to you one that's doing great, Best Buy stock, multi-year nearly all-time highs. There are no, I can't figure out the consumer or the consumer stock market because for every clothing store that's doing terribly, Abercrombie & Fitch is doing great. It, this has got to be, to me, one of the more, and I'd love to hear Steve's take on this, one of the more confusing consumer economies I've ever seen. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I look at a Target, when I look at a Best Buy, when I look at a Dick's, uh, what I'm seeing is huge cost beats, not revenue beats. So that is companies that are executing, yeah, they're doing great, but it's not because the consumer is buying more stuff from them. It really has to do with uh, margin gains. Oh, let me, Steve, let me quote uh, Dean Mackey as I throw this to you. He's been correctly more optimistic about the economy for some time, so I try to always follow it closely. And he says, despite worries about the health of the consumer, real consumer spending continues to grow robustly. 3.8% three-month, three-month annualized in July. 2.9 June, fastest pace since March of 2023. He says some people are worried the saving yeah. rate is falling, but how household net worth is at a higher level now than at any point in the 70 years prior to COVID. So he would underpin Brian's point. Yeah, well, and that's what I was talking about when I said earlier that this description of the consumer in the beige book doesn't comport with the data. Obviously, if it seeps in. Uh, and I'll side with uh, my colleague from, uh, I think it's Michigan. I think ultimately we say where Brian is ultimately from. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that when, when he says that it's a very confusing uh, time to predict or even understand the consumer in the sense that um, the consumer has been down for the count, you know, more times than uh, an opponent of Mike Tyson uh, <laughs> in, in, in the first round. So um, and, and they keep getting back up. And, and when you have employment levels like this with income now rising faster than inflation, the question you have is this. Does it take a shock or some mistake on the policy front to keep the American economy from at least potential growth of in the 2% range? I think it does, with the caveat being perhaps the mistake has already been made with the Fed staying too tight for too long. If that is not the case, I do think we can maintain decent growth here with the consumer continuing to spend, though maybe not as much as investors hoped, and maybe some of that has to come from prices coming down and margins coming in. But that's an investment equity story, not necessarily a macroeconomic one. Yeah, Mike Santoli, what would you layer into this? Well, I mean, I do agree that there are buffers. I mean, household you know, indebtedness is not where you typically see it when you have real stress in the household sector at this point. The other thing from the stock market market's point of view is direct consumer spending is a surprisingly small part of what feeds through to aggregate earnings. It's kind of a business to business and a capex and a technology driven index. And so you can kind of get by with a muddle through type slowish growth environment. Um, so I, I still think that we have buffers uh, that maybe we'll have to take advantage of, but it's it's not necessarily, you know, the, the, the wolves at the door. Right. I do like, Jim, that you're coming at us with a couple of names that are not the name. You know, there's NVIDIA. We, we talk about these names once in a while. I don't think we've ever talked about Amphenol, at least not recently, Cooper Companies. These are names that, that don't get any love or attention because they're not named NVIDIA. Why do you like them? The big tech companies sucked all the oxygen out of the room the last 18 months. Part of it was because of the spectacular earnings growth. 
But now the market's starting to broaden out. We're starting to see really robust earnings growth from a broader cross-section. Uh, Cooper is a great example. They sell contact lenses. They're taking market share from their competitors. Uh, people are moving more to dailies as opposed to monthlies, and, and that helps their business. And, and what had been an inefficiency in terms of manufacturing because they were running at full capacity, they're starting to get some manufacturing gains, so we're seeing margin gains there. So a real under-the-radar story. If the economy is a little bit weaker, I really don't care. People are still going to wear their contacts if they need to. Amphenol is a sensor and connector company. Stock really got beaten up yesterday on uh, some fears that maybe they were losing some content in an NVIDIA box. Uh, even if that happens, Amphenol is way more than a data center story or an NVIDIA story, a diversified business. We have more intelligence. We have more uh, content, more sensors, more connectors in everything we're buying and, and will buy for the next 20 years. So a great story there that I think the market overreacted to one piece of data, and it presents an attractive opportunity right here. I love the new names, Jim Tierney, Mike Santoli, and Steve. It's, it's across the lake. It's more I've been migrating slowly toward Wisconsin, or by the way, the muskie are biting. Come and fish with us anytime. We'd love to have you up in the North Woods.